Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In this video, we will show you the best technique to combine multiple time frames to get a well-informed and clear chart analysis. By combining price action and smart money concepts, we will demonstrate how to effectively make a top-down analysis to identify the market direction, supply and demand levels, liquidity zones, and trading opportunities from higher time frames to lower details. So guys, if this is something that interests you, please hit the like button to show your support and subscribe if you're new. See you guys after the intro. So, what is top-down analysis? Top-down analysis is a technique that combines the analysis of multiple time frames and market factors to gain a comprehensive understanding of market conditions. Starting from higher time frames and zooming into lower details allows us to get a major view of market direction in key areas at all levels. But remember, starting from the monthly time frame applying every single concept out there will make your chart look like this when you reach your entry time frame, which is completely useless. This video will teach you what to exactly look for in each of the time frames to make a well-educated analysis of any chart easily. But first, why do we even need to combine multiple time frames? Well, here are the top three reasons. Number one, overcoming directional confusion. Here on the pound dollar five minutes chart, the market looks choppy without any visible direction. It continuously violates the structure levels to both up and down sides confusing any trader trying to identify the direction. But if we zoom out to the one hour's time frame, you can quickly identify the market trend and the bearish pressure. This area is the same area on the five minutes chart we were previously observing. So by knowing the higher time frame directional bias, we can take short entries with confidence in the five minutes chart. Remember that whenever you are confused about the direction and the market keeps violating key levels of structure, you are focusing on the wrong time frame. So analyzing the bigger picture helps you to enhance your ability to take more precise and confident entries. Number two, increasing accuracy. A minor reaction to a higher time frame key level can be a significant trend change in the lower time frames. So before placing any trade, we should check how much room we have before tapping into a higher time frame supply or demand area. This will help us understand how to set our targets, stop losses, and avoid losing trades. Here on the euro dollar 15 minute chart, we had a strong bullish move with a clear fair value gap between the shadows. As a result, we have a valid order block which is an excellent opportunity to go long. However, the market suddenly changes direction and ignores the demand order block, and in case you are wondering, here is why. If we zoom out to the 1 hour time frame, we can see that this change in direction could be due to reaching a higher time frame key level that acted as strong resistance multiple times previously. So checking the higher time frame key levels could help us avoid this kind of unnecessary risks. On the contrary, look at another example. Here in the one hour's time frame, we have a move with obvious inefficiency breaking above the previous market structure. So here, if the price manages to pull back to the order block zone, it would be a perfect opportunity to enter a long position, set our stop below the swing low, and target the next level of market structure in front of the price. So let's see what do we have on the higher time frame. Here on the 4 hours, we can see that we have recently broken above these supply areas, so demand is in control, and we have enough room to go before reaching the next unmitigated supply area in front of the price. So could be a perfect trade since we have combined higher time frame levels and directional bias with a lower time frame entry setup. Number 3. Optimizing Trade Entries Analyzing multiple time frames allows traders to identify optimal trade entry and exit points. For instance, imagine if you were waiting for the price to pull back to the order flow area and open buys to go along with the bullish momentum. If we set buy orders at the beginning of the zone, our stop will be too large. So an optimal way to trade is to look for confirmation and open longs in lower time frames. This confirmation helps to get in the trades at a better price reduces the likelihood of false signals, and increases the trader's confidence in their analysis. Now that we have discussed the importance of a multi-time frame analysis, let me show you the best technique to combine multiple time frames to get a well-informed and clear chart analysis. 
But before we continue, if you have enjoyed this video so far, please smash the like button to show your support and comment below if you have any questions. Now let me show you our top-down analysis technique, step by step, which is the process of going through a higher time frame and scaling down to the lower details to identify best trading opportunities. We consider three types of time frames in our chart analysis. Starting from higher time frames, first we have weekly and daily, which we only use to identify higher time frame key levels of the market structure. Second, we use four hours and one hour time frame to do most of the analysis, including identifying market direction, supply and demand areas, order blocks, liquidity zones, and trading opportunities. Third, we use 15 minutes and 5 minutes time frames if we needed more confirmations and entry reasons in lower details. Now let's apply these concepts on the real chart of multiple pairs to completely understand this technique. Here we have euro dollar on the weekly time frame. In the first step, we mark the key levels of market structure that price have recently reacted to. We want to keep our analysis simple, so we only draw the most recent levels near the current price. For example, this level is our historical top, which has recently rejected the price twice. We have another key level in front of the price, which has acted as support multiple times. Also, we could draw another key level here. Now, this is the only thing we need from the weekly time frame, which is the key levels of market structure that have a high chance for price to react to when it taps into them. So, let's zoom into the daily. On the daily time frame first, we adjust the weekly levels to get the greatest number of touches from the daily perspective. Second, we draw the daily key levels of the market structure with another color. The reason is that we want to be able to distinguish the weekly and daily levels when we zoom into the lower time frame, since the higher the time frame, the greater the importance of a level. Now this was also the only thing we needed from the daily time frame. But remember, you need to keep three things in mind when drawing levels of market structure. First, draw the levels where you could get the greatest number of touches. Second, drawing from the bodies of the candles has a higher priority. Third, treat the levels as areas, not solid lines. Also, there are five criteria that we look for when identifying key levels of market structure, and each one of them makes a level more powerful. Number one, the turning points. Turning points are the areas that have reversed the market trend previously. The market sees these areas as overvalued or oversold, and there is a higher chance for the price to react to these levels when it reaches them again. Number two, multiple rejections. Multiple rejections from an area show that traders took action at this same level at different times, making it more powerful. More rejections are better, but it won't guarantee that the level will hold. When the market taps into a level, we closely watch price action to indicate what is happening. If the rejections are getting weaker every time, there is a higher chance for the price to break through this level, but it will be strong support if the price reaches this area again. Number 3. Acted as both support and resistance. If a level of market structure has acted as both support and resistance previously, it increases the probability for the price to reject this level again. Number 4. The move away from the area was drastic, meaning that not a tiny reaction but a true reversal. The deeper the return from a level, the more important that level is. Number 5. Recently respected or created levels. The recent levels in front of the price are always more effective since they are current and new, whether they are traditional support, resistance, or order blocks. Now with all being said, let's zoom into the 4 hours time frame to continue our analysis, which is where the smart money concepts come in. Here on the 4 hours, we have both weekly and daily levels visible on the chart. Each of these levels can act as strong support or resistance when the market reaches them. So we use these levels in two major ways. First, breaking each one into the up or down sides indicates whether the supply or demand is in control and price can continue pushing to the next level. Second, we use them as our higher time frame targets for our trades. So, the four hours is when we fully apply smart money concepts, which includes identifying market direction, supply and demand areas, order blocks, fair value gaps, liquidity zones, and possible trade opportunities. So here, the market has recently broken below key daily level with momentum, which indicates that supply is in control. 
Currently, we have an inefficient move that created a fair value gap and a break of structure. So the candle that created the inefficiency is our order block zone, which could give us a possible short entry. But we cannot place sell limits on this order block since the price has rejected a key daily level which could be a turning point for a short-term downtrend. So we need to have bearish confirmations in lower time frames like 15 minutes to enter short positions. On the other hand, if the price breaks above both levels, it indicates a strong bullish momentum which could make the price rise and test this weekly level one more time. Now let's zoom into the one hour's time frame to continue our analysis. Once again, we fully apply smart money concepts, including identifying market direction, supply and demand areas, order blocks, fair value gaps, liquidity zones, and possible trade opportunities. We know that higher time frame directional bias is bearish, and we expect the price to get rejected from the four hours time frame order block. After mitigating this daily zone, market is making a deep retracement and creating liquidity zones before reaching the 4 hours order block, which is another confirmation. Right now, the price is in a short-term uptrend, and an ideal situation would be for the price to change the direction where 4 hours and 1 hour will be in the same bearish direction. So far, we have applied price action and smart money concepts perfectly on the charts, and we have a 4 hours order block which is an area of interest for trading. It is important to note that, for a 4-hour time frame order block, we look for confirmation in 15 minutes, and for the 1-hour time frame order block, we look for confirmations in 5 minutes. So here the 15 minutes chart is the last time frame we will analyze in this process. In this time frame, we only look for confirmations and enter the positions. So first, we need the price to enter the order block zone, and create a change of character to confirm that the short-term uptrend is over and the market can continue pushing downwards. If we see no change of character, we won't have any trade. Our first target would be this daily level in front of the price, and if the market could manage to break this area, it can continue pushing downward to reach the next weekly level in front of the price. Now this setup was just an example of how to enter a trade, and you could use multiple price actions or smart money strategies to enter the market. But remember, before using any setup with your real account, you should backtest it on different pairs to evaluate the trading strategy's performance using historical data. Backtesting allows traders to build the required confidence and prepare for potential risks associated with their strategies, optimizing their trading strategies by fine-tuning parameters and rules. Now let's apply multi-time frame analysis to another pair to understand the concept completely. Let's continue our analysis with the Aussie dollar. Here on the weekly time frame, these are the only visible weekly levels near the current price, so we draw them in. Now let's move on to the daily. In this time frame first, we adjust the weekly levels to get the greatest number of touches and draw additional daily levels if they are obvious. Now let's jump into the 4 hours. Here on the 4 hours chart, we have a bearish bias. After mitigating this daily level, the market has made a deep retracement to this order block zone. So here are two scenarios. If lower time frame price action shows bearish signals at this order block, we could go short, and our primary target will be this daily zone and our secondary target weekly. On the contrary, if the market manages to break and close above the order block, our 4 hours directional bias will change to bullish, and we expect the price to reach the daily and weekly levels in front of the price. Now let's zoom into 1 hour's time frame to observe more details. Here on the 1 hour chart, we can see a lot of price action signals. After mitigating this 4-hour order block zone, the market made a change of character which signals that the short-term uptrend is over and price can possibly continue pushing downwards. Here we have a perfect opportunity at this 1-hour's order block to go short, and our first target would be this daily level, and we could use this weekly level as our long-term target. Right now, there is no need to look for confirmations in a lower time frame unless someone wants to look for more trades based on the analysis we made. But remember, more trades do not mean more profits. So guys, I hope this video provided some value for you. If it did, please hit the like button to show your support and subscribe to our channel if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below with your thoughts and questions since we do our best to answer them all. See you in the next episode.